Welcome back to my channel. I've got another uh, restoration project here. It's a uh, distant back saw, as you can see here. Pretty much in original condition, completely unrestored. You can see there a whole lot of surface rust. Couple of little cracks on the on the timber handle, but what I want to do is I want to salvage the handle, so I'll be just applying a little bit of glue just to strengthen up those areas. So there's a there's a crack here, and this one here. Unlike the other uh, restorations that I've done on saws and and woodworking tools, I'm going to be trying vinegar, white vinegar, to remove the rust here. So uh, just to give that a bit of a try, something different. And um, as for the handle, it'll be a standard sanding and I'll be applying the linseed, linseed oil mix on that. So first thing we've got to do is remove the handle. Very easy. There's three fasteners here with a corresponding three flat nuts. Sometimes these are a bit tricky to, to um, take out because it's, it's, if you're turning this nut here, it tends to... So spin the back and um, if that happens then I'm going to have to clamp clamp the timber a bit where the nuts don't um, sit so clamp them there for example and then I'll be able to hopefully take them out but anyway one step at a time let's get these um, screws out this one's not moving so it's good What I'm doing is I'm just holding the back just to get a, a feel of where we're at. Okay, that one looks like it's going to start to move. Let's go to the other one. Oh, wow. Got the first one, but uh, struggling with the other two. Slowly making progress. Unfortunately, I um, was trying to loosen these up and I accidentally left an imprint there. Unfortunately, but that will sand off. Very rusty one. All right, let me show you what I've done here. So for that last one, which I couldn't get out, it ended up stripping the the uh, little square little square hole on the other side. Let me show you. So square holes. That's what retains the other side. And uh, because that's now spinning, what I had to do, see if I can get a good, a good shot for you here, was drill a hole through the top where the slotted screw is into the, um, into the cavity where the male side, the threaded side meets. And now I put a bit of WD-40 in there. So um, hopefully that'll work the thread loose. Without having to, as I said, drill through the top and eventually punch out the other side. You can see here how I basically drill through that. So that goes in there like this. And unfortunately, um, as I suspected, you can see how that's square, that's square, and now that's rounded. So it's just going to be a bit of a challenge to put that back in without the back spinning. But at least I can now slowly oh, 
Jeez. Yeah, you can see why the fasteners have been um, rusted in. Okay, so now we're going to put this in a little bucket of white vinegar with a bit of salt in there. This will be just enough to cover. It'll be just enough to cover the. Might add a bit more, but um, effectively now we just let it sit there for up to 24 hours. I'll keep an eye on it every so often, every few hours I'll come in and shake it around and so on. And I'll uh, keep um, providing um, updates. Right, so while the, the uh, blade is in the vinegar, I'll start sanding this back. And all I'll be doing is just, just using sandpaper the um, old-fashioned way and I'll sand that back and try to get back to the original um, timber in there I won't bother filming that you know what it's like it's just a matter of sanding it all around no secrets there I'll show the end result it's turned out quite well so now that I've sanded that I'll um, I've got some linseed oil in here that I'll apply let that set and um, we can then return our focus onto the steel components. I'd say it's been a good 16 hours. I've used a scrubber and obviously it wasn't like this off the go, I've just scrubbed that clean. So there's still a little bit of kind of surface rust and obviously a little bit of pitting, but um, overall I'm pretty happy with that. And I've managed to give these a bit of a clean up as well. Still got to do a few more, but. Again, they're not going to be perfect, but the idea is not to be perfect. Right, so um, what it's doing now, this is bicarbonate soda, so I'm kind of leaving that in there to get rid of the um, vinegar acid. And um, we should be pretty close to assembly. and clean. There's an extra set there. Just line up the holes here and we should be able to just start dropping in these ends. Making sure that the that the hot, that the square on the other two are line up.
a little bit more uh, linseed on here. With this one I'm going to attempt to sharpen the teeth. They're actually not in bad condition in terms of there's no missing teeth or anything like that so it's just a matter of, I don't think I'll be able to get that in focus, oh here we go. So yeah, just got to set up a bit of a jig see how I go but um, aside from that I'm pleased with the results my uh, sort of jig up here you can see that I've got the blade just protruding from there so um, I'll show you what I'm going to be doing in terms of filing Right, so I have this kind of, I've got a number of these triangular small files. So um, the aim is to put that in with the face on the right basically vertical, which will give me that angle that I'm after. And so basically I'll just be sawing each of these ones. This will be in, in a uh, rip cut pattern from one to the next. Obviously I'm only just giving you a demonstration here. But you can see how I'm going to be keeping this side. This side of the uh, file is going to be always pointing upwards, vertical. What I'm doing is I'm just going back to see whether or not I need to do any any more on some of them. I mean, they're not going to be perfect. And um, this is in fact my first go at sharpening, so uh, yes, I might have the technique wrong, but I've got to, got to learn. These um, clamps are getting in the way, so I'm going to have to reduce it. The other thing too is, as you're doing this, you can see where I've actually done the filing by that reflection and then you get to about here and that's where I've stopped and everything else is still dull so that's a good way to kind of monitor where you're at not the best file it's very uh, very fine file that I'm using but um, it still seems to be doing the job at least for the moment Well, just to kind of show you where I'm at, this is the first pass. I'm going to go back where um, I haven't, not happy with. But I'll try, see how there's a nice little ridge that comes up, and then we get to right here, and this is where I've stopped. I'll show you where I've stopped. This one here is where I've stopped. And over here is where I need to continue. You can see how these are all just flattered. So that's my last tooth there. And I'm yet to continue over here. I've done a first pass. Now this first inch I've got here, I've made the, um, the teeth a little bit more, um, not so aggressive. So it's a starting point. Now I got this um, from watching one of um, Paul Seller's videos when he's um, sharpening a uh, a saw so I thought I'll apply that principle as well everything else has come out half decent again my first attempt at sharpening and uh, certainly feels a lot sharper now and um, 
there's probably one or two more teeth I'll need to actually go and um, re-sharpen but um, what I'm doing now is I'm <clears throat> viewing them as, as you see here and, and identifying which ones I need to actually continue doing a bit more sharpening. Let's see. So I've now, I think I've sharpened it. Let's um, give it a go. This is a bit of oak. This did not do that when I first tested it out, so um, obviously it's doing a damn good job. Well, I'm pretty happy with the end result. Yes, it might not be perfect, but um, certainly it's doing the job. So not a bad, um, not a bad result for effectively a salvaged back saw. Alright, I'll leave the video at that. Any comments, suggestions on how I can improve this work, how I can improve sharpening, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.